Hey guys, today what I'm going to do is show you guys how you can use uh, conditional formatting with a drop down list to create a dynamic filter for a table or a data set. So the first thing that you're going to do is in cell F2 what I'll show you how to do is add a data validation list. So if we select F2, we head over to data, we go over to data validation under the data tools. We're going to click on data validation there. I'm going to go to allow under the settings area. We're going to go to list and I'm going to select my list of part numbers which are going to be used as a filter in this table. So if I go over to the part numbers tab, I can type control page down. That'll bring me there. I scroll up a bit. I'm just going to select. I'm not going to make this dynamic today, but what I'll do is I'll select cell C4 and then I'm going to hit control shift the down arrow. That's going to bring me to cell 23 or the, the last cell that's in my data set. I'm going to then click back on the button icon there and once I've selected that range I'm going to hit OK. So now that we have that you'll see that our part numbers show up in our data validation list. So that is the first step of this. The second step is, is we're going to actually create a listing or a, the ability to add the drop downs and filters on our data set. So I'm going to select anywhere within my data set uh, and then I'm going to select and type control shift L and that's going to bring up these filters up at the top. You'll see that the filter was automatically brought up there. Next thing I'm going to do is we're going to add conditional formatting to the part number column. And what I'll do is I'll select control shift down arrow and that's going to bring me to the last point of data uh, in the data set. And once we've done that, we're going to head over to the home tab. We're going to go to conditional formatting and what we're going to do is highlight cells that are equal to. So I'm just going to scroll back right up to the top here. We're going to go and select cell F2 because that's where we're going to be selecting our, um, or the user is going to be selecting their item number. I'm going to hit OK then. Uh, actually, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go manage rules. I'm going to change this here to, uh, I'm going to delete this first rule that I have and I'm going to go edit rule and I'm going to change the format just so that it's not visible to be in black font and then we'll go over to the fill and we'll select white so we won't even notice that the filter uh, um, is applied here so once I've done that I'm going to hit OK I'll go apply hit OK so the whole idea here is that when the person selects the part number it's going to filter based on the part number selected and it's going to filter based on color so now that we've done that, is I'm going to select uh, sort, or I'm sorry, uh, we're going to select part number first, and then I'm going to be able to sort or filter by color. So we'll go filter by color in white, and you'll see that that kind of updated there. So, so the only problem that we have now is that it won't update as soon as I select and create this. So if I select item 11, you'll notice that our filter hasn't automatically updated. So if I go over to our, uh, I believe it's our data tab, and then I go to reapply, you'll notice that that works. Now that would be painful to do every single time. So what I'm going to do is create a quick macro that we can run with an event change, and uh, that's going to allow this to run immediately. So the next thing we're going to actually do is I'm going to go into our VBA screen or our, um, our macro screens. So I'm going to go alt shift, uh, I'm sorry, just alt F11. Oh. And that's going to bring up our Visual Basic for application screen. So now that I've done that, uh, you'll see that my other spreadsheet has already uh, called up this event change, but we're going to do this in a new workbook, which is the one that I'm in. So I'm going to just bring up my macro, which is this guy here. I'm going to copy that into a macro on my new sheet, which is in book three. So we're just going to go file, insert. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to go insert a module under my VBA book or under my uh, book three project. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go sub apply filter. And then what we'll do is I'm just going to paste that. So all this is saying is in the active sheet, 
uh, dot auto filter dot apply filter. So if we were to click on this macro, it would just automatically do a reapplication re of our filter. So now that I've done that, I'm going to just save this file. And what I'll do is I'll save it as a macro enabled workbook. And we'll say conditional formatting filter two because I've already built this workbook. Okay, so now that that's done, we can actually close this out or no, I do not want to do that. The next thing I want to do is actually go to um, the sheet one with we'll double click on that. I'm going to go to worksheet. I'm going to go to selection change under that drop down. We're going to select to change I'm going to get rid of this guy here. And then under our, our worksheet change event that we've created here, we're going to put in there a uh, call. And I forget the name of my macro. It's called apply filter. So it's just going to call this every time there's a change in the auto filter page or sheet of our workbook. So apply filter. I'm going to hit save again. Okay, so now that we've done that, if I select and change any of the values in here, you'll now notice that our table changes based on the values selected uh, in the choose part number field up at the top. So that's all for today. I wanted to show you guys one of the advanced techniques, one of the advanced techniques of this week. I know I'm going to show you a couple more uh, later on and I'd like to show some other videos on what else you can do. So you can see down here um, as we select these, these are now fully functional. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments. Thanks for joining me. Bye.